is a story about two kinds of people. The people who buy, the customers in a competitive market, and the people who help them get what they want, the salesmen. We're all customers quite often, and we're all salesmen now and then. Salesmen of things and of ideas. And there's a lot to selling anything. There are rules and ways of doing the selling job that have to be followed if we expect to be successful in a competitive market. Well, now, here's Don Evans. He's a pretty good young salesman, lots of drive, spends his time off the floor studying his product, planning his next day's work. Only trouble is, sometimes Evans thinks he has all the answers. Say, Don. Oh, yes, Mr. Carter. Can you come into my office for a few minutes? And here's Jim Carter, Evans' boss. <laughs> he doesn't always agree with Evan. Don, my calendar says that you've been with us just three months to the day. That's right. Still like it? Oh, yes, sir. I like selling. I like it here. I like the job, too. I just hope the job likes me. Sit down. Well, Don, for a man who's only been with us three months, I'd say you were doing all right. But you know, Don, successful selling in this business or any other isn't all just a matter of natural ability or the will to win. It takes a lot of hard work, study, practice, and above all, a thorough understanding of what selling is really all about. You remember, Don, when you first came here, we had several sessions on what selling really is and how to go about it? Mm -hmm. I think you caught on fast, too, for a start. But before we go any further, it might be a good idea to see where we're at so far. You know, Don, right now you're forming sales habits that are going to stay with you. It's easy to form the wrong habits that are hard to get rid of. On the other hand, it's just as easy now to form the right habits. So let's analyze this selling job of yours once more just to see how we stand. Well, I guess the first thing in selling is to know your product. You sure can't do much selling unless you know what you're talking about. You know, I've been noticing lately how many salesmen really don't know their products. I only yesterday, I saw an electric shaver in Johnson's window down the street. And I'd been needing a new one, so I thought I'd go in and find out how this one works. Well, I don't know just what kind of motor it's got in it, but we sell lots of them. Lots of them. No complaints either. Yeah, sure, I know, but I've had a couple of these things. One of them was okay, but I lost it. The other only ran half the time. So I'd like to know what's what before I buy. Well, we handle a lot of different makes of shavers in this place. Yeah, sure, thanks. All that guy needed to make a sale was just a little information about his product. I was all ready to part with 20 bucks, but not without knowing what I was buying. And he didn't know his product, so he lost the sale. That's right, Don. Product knowledge is essential. But important as that is, what more do you need? Well, I remember we talked about a plan for selling. That's right, the four-step sale. Of course, there are lots of ways of breaking down the steps in a sale. But for my dough, this four-step plan of ours covers the ground. And Don, right out there on that business street, You can see those four steps at work all day long. Take, for example, the first step, finding prospects. All those people out there, their prospects, prospects for all sorts of products. That's why those stores out there are located where the greatest number of people pass by. In other kinds of selling, of course, like ours, you have to go find the prospects yourself, most of them. You have to use every device under the sun to find people who can qualify as prospects for our product. Those other steps of the sale are being worked out there, too. Take the second step, creating the desire to own. That flapjack operation over there, creating the desire to eat in this case. The idea is to present your product to the prospects in whatever way appeals to them most, to make them want it. That flapjack boy has it, and it's the same idea no matter what the product. And take that kid over there. He has a prospect. He has created the desire to own. But unless he can get the man to part with the nickel, he's just been wasting his time. That's sometimes the toughest part of the job. But it's the payoff. That's right, kid. Make the old tightwad come across. There. That was a perfect example of the third step of a sale, getting the decision to buy. And there's an example of the final step, delivering the product right. By delivering the packages right to her car, the clerk has followed up his sale with a goodwill gesture that should bring the customer back again and may help get her to send in her friends. Well, I think I've got those four steps pretty well in mind, Mr. Carter. 
In fact, I've got them all down right here. And in addition, I've tacked on some reminders of some of those other things we talked about. You know, the rules for handling people. Good, let's hear them. Ask questions. That's point number one. Seems like the only way you can find out how to handle a prospect is to ask questions that'll get him to give you the information you need. Let the prospect talk. That's the only way you can discover what he really wants, what he's interested in, whether you're on the way to selling. That's right, Don. If you do all the talking, you get darn little help from the prospect. So you let him talk. What's your next point? Don't argue. Arguments just make people mad. You don't get people to buy things by making them mad at you. You try to set them straight, but not by arguing. In fact, you can win an argument and lose the sale. Yes, but the old one, too. You tell the prospect, well, yes, that would seem to be the case, but there's another angle. You know, Don, using the yes, but is one way to avoid an argument and get the prospect thinking along your lines. Agree that what he says may be partly true or used to be true, and then get in your legs. Repeat the objection. Then the prospect knows you've got it straight. Or maybe he'll back down a little, or even admit that this isn't his real objection at all. And finally, concentrate on the main objection. Answer it to the prospect's complete satisfaction. You can usually get him so he has to say yes when you ask for that order. Of course, there's probably a lot more to this business of handling people. Well, Don, that's all good stuff. You seem to have the right slant on a lot of things. But someplace along the line, you seem to have missed one of the most important points of all. Why, I thought I covered most everything here. Yeah? Look, Don, you talk about rules for handling people. But just what are you trying to accomplish with these people, these prospects? What are you driving at? Well, I guess I'm trying to get them to buy the product. Sure, sure. But why should they buy it? Why do they buy it? Well, because it's tops. Because it's got what they want. Got what they want. All right, now you're getting someplace. Well, what is it that they want? What do people want from any product? What are the buyer's interests? Why do people buy one product instead of another? What are you trying to prove to people with all your product knowledge and so on? I'm trying to get them to buy. Buy what? Well, the, the product, of course. Look, Don. You've got a whole mass of sales information stored up there inside your head, but you've forgotten what you're trying to accomplish with it. Think it over. What do people want from any product? What do they want out of life? What are the buyer's interests? inside your noggin. The guy who really knows what you know about what people want. What people want? That again. That's right. You know what people want. Take yourself, for example. How do you like to come home to an easy chair? A pleasant, warming fire in the fireplace. Just relax with your slippers. Pipe. 
your newspaper. Solid comfort. Yes, comfort is mighty important to you and to a lot of other people. That's one of the things you and lots of other people want. Then, take a mother with her child, her most priceless possession, her baby. What's the angle there? Why, the safety of that baby. Mother's only thought as she tucks her precious baby in. Safety from all harm. Safety through the night. Yes, safety is one of the most important things in the world to people. Sometimes safety is the only thing that really matters. On the other hand, why does a farmer use a windmill instead of a power pump? Economy. Fuel to run a windmill is free. Economy. The farmer's first consideration in using a windmill. A thing of first importance to many people. And why do we have jet planes? Why? Just one reason. Performance. Performance. Do a better job than anything else. Performance from a jet plane. Performance from a lawnmower. To some people, performance is the only thing that counts. Durability. Bridges. Man-made structures which must last for generations. Which tell us just how important durability can be to people. Durability. How long will it last? And here's a picture to delight the eye and quicken the pulse of every beholder. To many people, like the artist, appearance is all important. Beauty in women. Beauty in many other things. Well, that's it. Those are the six things that people want. The six buyer's interests. Of course, sometimes we call them by other names, but it's the same thing. For example, take that cigarette. You pick a certain brand, maybe for its flavor or its firmness or the fact that it doesn't make you cough. Well, in a cigarette, those things all add up to performance. Performance in a cigarette. Yeah, that's right. But doggone it. With my product, all I have to do is give a complete demonstration. If I do that, I've answered all six of the buyer's interests. <laughs> Partly answered, Don. Sure, you should always give a complete demonstration. But you've got to do a thorough selling job on the prospect's main interests. For instance, those are certainly good-looking shoes you have on. Why did you buy them? Right, because they're comfortable. I've got to be on my feet an awful lot in this job, you know. Exactly. And while the shoe salesman mentioned appearance and economy, you wouldn't have bought those shoes unless they were comfortable. Someone else might have been more impressed by appearance. But to you, comfort was the chief interest. So the salesman hit that hard. The thing is that different people attach different degrees of importance to each of the six buyer's interests. One may think performance is the most important. Another? Economy, or safety, or comfort. I get it. My job in selling is to find out which of these interests each prospect is most interested in. And then to show that my product is the answer. Absolutely. Product knowledge. The four steps of the sale. The rules for handling people. All these things should be aimed continually at finding the prospect's interest. And then... Proving that your product best fills those interests. That's true of every salesman, no matter what he's selling. Take Pete, for example. He sells china. Very expensive china. And not so expensive china. Morning, madam. What can I show you today? Well, I'd like to see something in the dinner set. All right. Uh, did you want something for every day, or were you interested in something more elaborate? Well, something for every day. And I don't want to spend too much. My present dishes are always chipping. Oh, I see. So you're interested in something low-priced, yet durable. Yes. I think we've got just about what you have in mind. Some new low-priced patterns just came in. Here's one we consider very attractive. Yes, it is nice. And the price is surprisingly low for a dinnerware of this quality. It's durable, too, for everyday use. Let me tell you why this china is so durable. 
see? You may have noticed that. Pete established with a simple question or two just what his customers' main interests were. Then, he showed merchandise that satisfied those interests. And he stressed the things that applied to the interests. You have to do that in selling china. And you have to do it in selling men's suits. Yes, sir, Mr. Williams. At the price, this suit is really a steal. And it'll wear like a carpet. Sure, sure. And the price is okay. But tell you, it doesn't feel right. It's too heavy. Oh, but Mr. Williams, to see how beautifully it fits you and the color made for you. And at that price. Listen, I wouldn't take this dog bed for a gift. Wait a minute. Hold everything. Let's back up a little and do it right. Seems a little heavy. You'd uh, be more comfortable with a lighter weight material? Right. Uh, let's just try on this lightweight pinstripe. See if it doesn't give you the comfort you want. And it'll hold the press about as well as any material you can find. Well, this is better. Yes, that was better. When a prospect gives you a hint as to what his interests are, stay on the beam. Prove his interests. If he wants comfort, sell him comfort, not price or appearance. A good salesman keeps that constantly in mind. In selling clothing, and it's the same thing with radio. Real furniture construction, as you can see. The wood is about the finest we've seen in any radio cabinet. Genuine hardwoods and hardwood veneers, not synthetic. No, oh, it certainly is good looking. Yeah. And for loading and unloading the phonograph, it's really convenient. You just pull the door open and the record player slides out where you can reach it easily. It is convenient. Yeah. Of course, the most important thing about any radio set is, how does it perform? Yeah, performance. How about that? That's what I want to see. Yes, how does this one perform on this new FM everyone is talking about? Well, just wait till you hear it. But first, I'd like to tell you some of the reasons why the performance of this set is so much superior. Now, performance begins right here. Well, there are lots of ways of doing it, but you have to find out which of the six interests your prospects are most interested in. Then, you have to demonstrate your product in terms of that interest. Well, Don, that's the story. Actually, you really knew those things all along. You just have to remember them all the time, at every step of the sale. Remember what people want. That's what Carter was talking about. The things people want. Six buyers' interests. Comfort, safety, economy, durability, performance, and appearance. Yes, sir. That's it. That's the answer to what people want. All the product knowledge, the four-step sale, the rules for handling people, they're all aimed at just one thing, finding out exactly what a prospect wants, and then proving that has it. You see, I knew it all the time. 